Though the terrestrial planets have similar characteristics, there are also distinct differences. Electronically charged Not ions and electrons that become trapped in the Earth's magnetic field form ion layers in the upper regions of the atmosphere. This is known as the ionosphere. When we're looking up at the stars in the sky, we are actually looking into the past. We know that light travels at about 300 million meters per second. Well, that is certainly fast by normal standards. In the context of the size of the universe, while solar disturbances may disrupt radio communications, they also create a shower of incoming energetic particles. Schwartz Child Solution describes space time in the Pacific. You know, I think the more important question we should be asking is what is time? exist on other planets in our solar system? Is Mars the most likely place for it to develop? Dr. Harold Grindstaff thinks in order to answer that question, we may want to look a bit further up. As we travel past the terrestrial planets in our solar system, we reach the Jovian planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets are massive inside. Eric, my man, you're looking good this morning. Should I do for you, Ben? It's official. Proactive Financial is now ours. All right. Well, congratulations. It's huge. You are in luck, my friend. I'm giving you first pick of the new clients. Yeah? What's the catch? Oh, catch. Come on, Eric. Don't be so cynical. Don't bullshit me, Ben. I know how you operate. What's the catch? OK. It's really quite simple. Yes, it's a boutique operation, but their clientele are mostly the elderly type. You know, the kind don't know what to do with their money, so they just hand it over to the portfolio manager to manage until it's time to pass down to the kids. The best type. That's great. That sounds wonderful. What are you not telling me? Just need you to spend a couple of weeks with no, their no, account. No, 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 hell no. You are not doing that shit to me again, OK? Now, why do I always have to be the one to take the new acquisitions pass downs? You know, the last guy, he pestered me nonstop to join his fucking Dungeons and Dragons group, OK? I had to spend two weekends, two weekends, Ben, in some guy's ratty-ass apartment with a bunch of his loser-ass friends that look like milk from Office Space. All right? They're arguing over whether, you know, a dwarf or an elf makes a better cleric. I'm not doing that shit again. Okay, okay. okay. This time the he is a she, and they don't play Dungeons and Dragons. What are you doing? Don't, not the numbers. Do you have any idea what two weeks is to me? Let me tell you something. I bring home seven grand a week in commissions. That's not including salaries, all right? You know how much money that is to this firm? Now you want me to sift through some worthless clients' portfolios under the guise that you're actually doing me a favor, right? You and I both know what, there's one client in there, maybe two if we're lucky, that's actually worth my time to manage. This is intern work, Ben. Not something for your, your best employee. You know, maybe I failed to properly explain to you the boss-employee relationship. I tell you what to do, and you do it. It's really that simple. OK, so that's how we're going to play this, right? You should take notes. Although it may seem to you that I got the job as senior vice president of accounts based solely on my dash and good looks, I actually knew when to shut the fuck up and do what I was told. OK, no, I get it. You want me to be a team player, I'll be a team player. That's all I'm asking. All right. Hey, so I've been thinking, right? Oh, you should keep that up, Cal. People appreciate it. Thank you, man. Oh, you will appreciate it. So there are 7 billion people in this world, and every two seconds, somebody dies. That means in 116 years, everyone that's alive right now will be gone. Psh. That's 2129, man. That is coming fast. Yeah, yeah. You figured that whole thing out while you were waiting for me? Are you kidding me? Some extreme math. It took me the entire day. <sighs> Only Cal doesn't work on Mondays. What's with you? I'm sorry, my boss, he's got another one of his brilliant ideas. We're taking clients from a smaller firm, so he's got this, this chick that's gonna come in and, I don't know, teach me how to cater to their upper echelons elderly, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> Listen to you, man. You're like, the epitome of white people problems. I'm a rich white male, what do you expect? Well, hey, Tom Hanks was a rich white male and he figured out a way to connect with the common folk. Yeah, yeah, but he was retarded. Whoa, 
And you would lose your mind too if you were on that island for that long. Are you talking Castaway? Yes! And you know, Forrest Gump was not retarded either. I learned more from that man than I ever did in any school. Yeah, I actually believe that, Cal. But maybe you should have paid more attention. You could have figured out that whole 21, 29 thing before it's too late. I don't even know why you're still working at the job. I mean, I always hear you complaining about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, it pays well. I like money. You like money so much, you never spend it? What are you talking about? I spend money all the time. Besides, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Okay, you make more money this year than I've probably ever made in my entire lifetime. Probably. Yeah, you live in a small ass apartment, you own one car, you never come to Magic Mountain. The apartment is nice, and who needs more than one car? Besides, like I said, I'm saving it, you know? You never know when you might need it. It's from the lady. Well, that brain in here, what do you think? Well... <sighs> She was already here when I got here. Okay. Cute, alone, easy pickings, right? Eh. Check out the wedding ring. It's always more than misty eye, man. You want the real report? Recent divorcee. Can't quite seem to let it go. <laughs> you're amazing. I'm gonna go see if uh, see if you're right. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right. Dude, what happened out there? She was like all over you. Bored me. Bored you? Jeez, I wish I could be bored with someone who looks like that. Edwin Hubble used spectral shifts in the galaxy to determine that the universe is constantly expanding. Hubble's law raises some interesting questions. If galaxies are, in fact, receding from us in all directions, does that mean that we are at the center of the universe? Eric, allow me to introduce you to... Ju Julia Proctor. Nice to meet you. Eric Lasseter, team player. Well, I'll let you two get acquainted. So, what I was thinking is we could get started off... You know what we could do is just do this whole thing the easy way. Just pile everything I'm going to need right here on the desk. I'll just take care of it all on my own, if that's okay with you. Hey, that wasn't part of the deal. I was very clear with Ben about what the turnover processes would entail. Is this going to be a problem? No, no, not at all. Just dig in, go ahead and have a seat. We'll do this together. So, um, where do you want to get started? Oh, did you make a note on there about sticking with market interest strategies? strategies? I got it, yeah. Okay, because I'm just trying to make sure that we keep everything... I'm very good at my job. I got it. I know what I'm doing. Just keep moving. You know what? Actually, it's getting really late. Um, why don't we just pick this back up in the morning? Or we could take a combat nap in the break room. That was a joke. Uh, wow, you don't like me, do you? I don't know you. So if you really want to understand the planets in our solar system, you first need to look at what different types of planets exist. Okay, so you've got terrestrial planets, right? Those are planets that share physical and chemical characteristics with our own planets. And these planets with these specific characteristics, okay, you've got Venus, Mars, Mercury, and of course Earth. Oh, uh, hold on. Actually, we haven't spoken about Jackson McHale yet. Uh, Jackson McHale, got him. Or Byron Evans, Judas Mankiewicz, the Emerys? Got him, got her, and I got them. Okay, stop, all right? This isn't fair. This is important to me. It was part of the deal. We would talk about every client individually because you're not going to pick up on the subtleties on your own. Okay, all right. Um, Jackson McHale, right? 64 years old. Uh, $780,000 net worth. Largest stock holding is Intel, and his hobbies include stamp collecting, fishing, and spending time with his grandkids, right? Byron Evans, Byron Evans is a character, 74 years young, likes the ponies, horse racing, and fast women. Maybe that's why he's not worth so much. Judith Zamankiewicz, this woman, 600K net worth, right? Clearly not giving her proper guidance because in the 12 years that she's been with your company, she's only seen a 5.7% return on her investment. I like to think that I could have at least come close to doubling that. And then we have the Emery's, right? Robert, the patriarch, retired after 42 years at Raytheon. 
Uh, made a fortune in dot coms. Got out before the bubble burst. He's got two kids, both sons. Loves them both. Mitch owns a small chain of seafood restaurants in San Diego County. And Hal is a real estate agent in San Luis Obispo. Good family. What else is there to know? I'm impressed. Well, I worked from home last night. It's not that big of a deal. With your ability to properly pronounce the Mankiewicz. <laughs> Did I? I'm kidding. It's, uh, wow, it's really good work. Thank you. At the orbital speed of the stars in our galaxy, we can see that our galaxy contains more mass than is accounted for by our stars and gases. So, what is this mysterious invisible mass that makes up the rest of our galaxy? Hey, man. Hey, buddy. You busy? I am a little bit. Yeah, we are uh, sort of up to our ears in this uh, business acquisition thing. What's going on? Well, you know, I was just calling because I was just making sure we're still on to now for beers. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to pull the ripcord on that thing, buddy. Um, I got a lot of work to do. Julie and I are getting started early tomorrow. But Julie and I? Whoa. This girl is cute, isn't she? Muy caliente. All right, buddy. You have a good night. What exactly is this mysterious matter? Dark matter exists in two forms, ordinary matter and exotic matter. The ordinary matter is referred to by its acronym, machos, or massive compact halo objects. These objects are usually detected by the gravitational change of plans. I'm going to need these clients done a little bit sooner. Okay. Yeah. No, how much sooner? End of the week. SEC quarterly review got moved up a little bit. I need to have these things done before they show up. <sighs> Just get it done. Work overtime if you have to, but I need it by Friday. Looks like it's going to be another long night. Yeah. What else is new? <sighs> you hungry? Good. Excellent idea. You know, there's this really cool thing. You can turn those into a plate, but if you're going to just slurp it out of the box, let me at least grab you a fork. Fork? You don't eat Chinese with a fork. Use chopsticks. Why would I use chopsticks? It's an inferior utensil. I have a far superior one here in the kitchen. Because that's just the way it is. It says who? It'd be like a caveman using sticks and stones to start a fire when he's got a lighter in his pocket. Oh, come on. Where's your spirit of tradition? I think tradition is for those who live in the past. Oh, is it? Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah, but they wouldn't know it, right? Because they hadn't studied it to begin with. So to them, it's just a brand new and exciting future. Oh, you do have an answer for everything, don't you? You say it like it's a bad thing. No one likes a Johnny know-it-all. Besides, you're not as smart as you think you are. It hurts me. Just calling it like you see it. If you were really smart, You'd be doing something more with your life. I don't know. I mean, I'm a poor kid from the Midwest, grew up in poverty, and uh, now here I am, a successful account manager, making high six figures a year. I'd say that's something. Perhaps if money alone is how success is defined, but it's not. At, at least not in my world, it's not. Well, how do you define success? By the kind of impact you make on the world. Yeah, I help people plan for retirement. That's impactful. You help rich people get richer. It's like teaching fish how to swim. It's pretty low impact. Especially when you are capable of so much more. Okay, what do you mean? You are incredibly intelligent. But I have seen your type before. You're smarter than everybody else, so you get by with minimal effort. But you will never reach your full potential living like that. I mean, you could really have a real impact on society. You could be a, a doctor curing disease or a scientist inventing new technology or... An astronaut. What? I always wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid, so... I thought I would grow up to be... 
an astronaut. I never told anyone that before. So why didn't you? You know, it's not too late to do something great. Don't be afraid to listen to what the universe is telling you. All right, you are not gonna believe this, but we are done. Really? With time to spare, yep. Wow. Your boss will be excited. Maybe I'll give you a bonus. No, he's gonna call it the price of admission and tell me that I'm lucky to be working here. Ah, oh, but that guy loves you in a way he's not ready to deal with. <laughs> that just sounds creepy. You're saying gay people creep you out? No, of course not. Why would I say that? Wait, are you saying that you think Ben is gay? <laughs> no, I was just trying to make you uncomfortable for a second. All right. You are evil. <laughs> Devilishly. All right, come on. I'll buy an ice cream to celebrate. Do you eat ice cream? Yeah. All right, come on. Can I have this? Uh, no, it's not your fault. You didn't know. How could you have? No way of knowing. Are you a cone eater? I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Get rid of those. But, uh, <laughs> tell you the truth, the worst part about it was, uh, the money, you know? I mean, they're in a better place now and they're happy, but. What, you mean the funeral expenses? No, 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 they're not, they're not dead. I bought them tickets on the ocean world liner. They're probably more alive than I am. That is not funny. <laughs> well, you're not the only one who enjoys a little sarcasm. So what's next for you? What are you, uh, what are you planning on doing? What's your next move? Well, I want to give back, you know? I, I mean, between the buyout and my inheritance, I am set for life. Really? And so that means I can do what I want when I want. And I want that want to matter. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I mean, exactly what are you planning on doing? Like, how are you going to change the world? You know, you strike me as that kind of person who wants <laughs> to change the world. You're going to save the whales or what? Well, I guess I'm not so much of a whale girl as I am a humanitarian. Uh, I don't know. You watch the news and you see these horrible things. And it just, it makes you think, we really got it good here in the USA. They don't even show you the worst stuff. Yeah, no, you're probably right. So what, you want to expose the truth? I want to help those who can't help themselves. I don't know, maybe teach kids or build libraries, dig water wells. <laughs> I don't know, it's like you said. There's a lot of problems in the world. One girl can't fix them all. I don't know about that. I know I believe in you. I do. I do. And, um, you've inspired me. You have. Um, maybe it's time for me to do something great. Should have become an astronaut see how big this world really is. You know, there are over 300 billion stars in the Milky Way. And all we can do is sit here and observe. You know, if you keep looking at the world through a filter, you're never gonna see its true beauty. If you want to be an astronaut, do it. Sometimes life gives you moments. And if you don't leap at the opportunity, you lose them forever. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I have to go. I have to go. Julia. Julia. So she just left after high school? Mm. Ice cream philosophy, romance. Well, you gave her the deadly combo, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's probably for the best. What do you mean? Why, why do you even care, bro? Look at you. 
They're tall, good-looking deer. You could probably have any girl in this bar. You know, here's one, for example. Just pick one up, dust yourself up, and move on to the next one. I don't want the next one. You understand? I want this one. Well, see, so you only think you want this one. It's called Psychology 101, my friends. You two were forced to spend an inordinate amount of time together in such a brief period. Of course, it's gonna be natural for a certain level of attraction to develop, but after time, it's all gonna just pass away. Psst. Okay, Freud, no, seriously, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about, okay? The energy was different, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's okay. It's different. You convinced me. Yeah. Wait, what, what, really? No, I can see that you convinced yourself, so I'm just trying to be supportive. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, I think you should take another crack at it. I mean, who knows? Maybe she's sitting at some bar on the other side of town right now, having this exact same conversation with her best friend named Callie. That's right. Wait, she got a best friend named Callie? Well, I like to think that everyone has a best friend named Cal. Or Callie if it's a girl. Although if she was a tomboy, they'll call her Cal for sure. Okay. What's this? It's a peace offering. So you can always see the entirety of the world. <sighs> Stupid. Oh, it's, it's great, thank you. Look, Eric, I need to apologize. It's my fault, listen, I got caught up in the moment and I did something I shouldn't have done. It just felt right. No, listen, I need to apologize because I should have told you that I had a boyfriend. A uh, fiance, actually. Oh. I should have mentioned that you don't, uh, you don't wear a ring. Uh, yeah, it's being sized. Um, okay, so a fiance since, uh, since when? 2008. Well, not engaged since then, but that's when we met. Our first date was actually the opening night of Twilight. And you're still with him? <laughs> I was actually sitting on a park bench outside the South Hills Mall. And uh, this guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, I have this ticket to the 705 showing because I was going to take my little sister and she got sick. And any chance you'd want to go with me? Look, Eric, uh, I don't want to bore you with all these, you're a great guy, you're going to find the right girl cliches. But you really are a great guy. That's great. a total disaster, okay? I didn't even get a word out. Boom, she drops that bomb on me. I, I, what do I do? Well, listen to the advice I already gave you. You gotta forget about her. Just let her be. Impossible. Wow, this girl's really gotten to you, huh? You know what? The way I see it, you only have two options, okay? One, you win her the old-fashioned way with your words. Or... I let her be. You kill her boyfriend. Cal, are you crazy? No. I, I'm not gonna kill her boyfriend, Cal. You want me to? No. Well then, you gotta go talk to her. Well, I don't know what to say to her. I tried. Jesus, Jesus Christ, do I have to do everything well, for this you? This whole thing's got me fucked up. Look at me right now. Does this look like a happy face? Okay, look, if you are as convinced as you say you are, then you gotta communicate that to her, man. Say something honest, from the heart. You gotta lay it all out there and just let the chips fall where they may. Just make sure you stop short of going all Affleck and chasing Amy on her. Affleck got the girl. Touche. Okay. Okay. Julia. Hey. Hey. Um, do you have a minute maybe to go over something? Yeah, yeah, what's up? I don't know how to put this. Um, life is complicated, right? It's, it's full of surprises, things you, things you didn't see coming. And um, you gotta make choices. 
and there are moments, right, that are that are important. And, uh... Eric, what do you? Think? It's just, it's, bear with me. Uh... I think I'm falling in love with you, and, 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 and uh, just hear me out. Um, there are over seven billion people on this planet, yet somehow, some way, our paths managed to cross, right? In the most unlikely event. And I feel amazing when I'm around you. I feel like I'm full of life and happy, like I have purpose. And um, I'm sort of hoping that you felt the same way, if not just a little bit of you. And I, and I feel like if you do, that we owe it to ourselves to explore that feeling a little bit, a little bit deeper. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm sitting over there and I'm waiting for you. And I can't help but think that, uh, that you and I were meant to be together. No, Lord. If the universe, as you say it, truly wanted us to be together, we would be together. We would have met at a different time, but we didn't. I love my fiance. Hey, Ben. Adam, hi, honey. Uh, uh, this is Eric. He was just in the area. Thought he'd say hi. Yeah, yeah, no, Eric. Hey, Jules told me a lot about you. It's nice to finally meet you. Oh, good. All right, great. Uh, just the, just said the good stuff about you. Oh, well. Yeah. You guys don't have to stand out here. Why don't you come inside and grab a drink? Uh, you know what? I would, but um, I, I probably shouldn't do that. I came by for a work thing, and then I got to get back to the grind, and you know how it is. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, yeah. nice to finally meet you, brother. Oh, you too. Thanks. Thanks. Goodbye, Eric. Enjoy your day. Take care, brother. If we were able to move an object faster than the speed of light, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, there would be an inertial frame of reference in which the object or the signal would be moving backward in time. Is time travel possible? Or is time travel simply a concept that exists only in science fiction? Imagine reliving the moon landing or watching Babe Ruth hit a home run in person. And well, time travel is often thought of as a science fiction trope. It is in fact something that may someday soon become a reality. You see, the theory of general relativity suggest a basis for backward time travel. And I not only believe that time travel is theoretically possible, but I am confident that it will be achieved during my lifetime. Actually, uh, not a student. I was hoping to speak to Dr. Joseph Goyer. Ah, authorized personnel only beyond this point, sir. Right. Um, no, I understand. I was just hoping to get a quick, you know, word with him. Maybe you could bring him up to the front, or I could schedule an appointment. Maybe to speak to him later. Whatever works. Are you deaf or are you stupid? I'm sorry. What? what? Ah, deaf. I see. Authorized. Personnel only beyond this point, sir. Are you for real? Because I was just asking for a little bit of help. Yeah, okay. Keep pushing me, buddy. And you're about to see just how real I can get. Everything okay here, Ed? Yes. Nothing I can't handle, Professor. Uh, can I help you? Uh, perhaps. I was uh, hoping to get a word with Dr. Joseph Goyer, your physics department. It's okay, Ed. I'll handle this. Come on, follow me. Come on. Pardon me, Ed. Dr. Goyer was one of the most brilliant scientists I ever worked with. Was? He doesn't work here anymore? Not for about five years now. What happened? Lab accident. 
He was working on a device that he believed would generate enough power to open two points in the space-time continuum. Time travel. But his experiment wasn't authorized. Something went wrong. An explosion destroyed the physics lab. And he died in that explosion. No. No one was hurt in the incident. But the university president was none too pleased. Gore was fired. After he got fired, uh, did you guys keep in touch? You reach out? You have any idea where he might be? No. He pretty much dropped off the radar after that. You might want to try his ex-wife. I think she still lives in the area. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. Oh, you've been great. Thank you. Uh, it's time travel thing. You, uh, you don't suppose he was onto something, do you? His theory has contradicted many modern physics principles. But Joe was smarter than all of us. So, who knows? Thanks again. So can I get you something to drink? Coffee? Water? Uh, sure. I'll have a, a water. Sounds good. You know, like I told you on the phone, I don't think I'm going to be very much help to you. You know, it seems like a lifetime ago. So when was the last time you, um, you talked to him? Uh, well, truth be told, I haven't seen or heard from him in almost five years. And you don't have any idea where he might be, or? No, he had a grandfather on his mother's side who owned some land out in Colorado, or, or maybe it was Arizona. I can't remember, but you could start there. So, I hold him McNeil her. She did not Alyssa Jones me back. What? Dude, that blows, man. And not in a good way. Oh, and I met her fiance. Was he a Rick Darris type? No, no, he, he was charming, actually. Nice guy, yeah. I invited me in for a drink, I declined. <sighs> well, that's tough to compete with. You can't compete with it. <laughs> Unless... <sighs> what if there was a way to travel back in time, you know, to a point before she met this guy. Holy shit, why didn't I think of that? The, the Dolores parked right here, Marty. What are we waiting for? All right, I'm being serious. What if that were possible? Well, I, I would say that. That's a crazy plan. Hey, why are you chasing this woman? Oh, I never did anything with my life. Nothing. Uh, I'm floating by. I never fought for anything. I never inspired to do anything. I never worked for anything. What if this is that moment? What if this is that moment that, that I'm supposed to fight for? I don't want to look back and have any regrets. What are you talking about? There's this guy, Joseph Goyer, Dr. Joseph Goyer. He believes that time travel is possible. I know it sounds crazy, but he thinks it can be achieved in our lifetime. Can you believe him? No, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'd like a chance to get to talk to the guy. You know? Okay, what, then why don't you? Because I can't find him. Uh, I went to his old work, I talked to his ex-co-workers, his ex-wife, nobody knows where the hell the guy is. Well, maybe, maybe he's dead. His ex-wife said something about, about a ranch in uh, Colorado or Arizona or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, what did you say this guy's name was again? Uh, Joseph Goyer. Like G-O-Y-E-R. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you doing? Give me 24 hours. Find this doctor of yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how are you going to do that? Hey, I'm Cal. You got this, right? Yeah. All right, there you go. Thanks, buddy. All right. Yo! So, whoever couldn't find this doctor of yours wasn't looking very hard. What are you talking about? You found him? Yeah, where's the peanut butter? To your left. 
Oh, yeah. Second shelf. County record. What? Arizona County records, to be exact. So, turns out his grandfather owned a large parcel of land in rural Arizona. Land which, according to county records, has never changed hands. You follow? Right. So the grandfather passed away in 1992, which means the land probably stayed in the family, so they never had to file the paperwork to change the name on the deed. Okay, how'd you find out all this information anyway? Internet, what do you think? Oh, I did a quick satellite search, and I found this. Check it out. What's this? So that's the house right there. Yeah. And then that looks like a car or a truck. It's kind of hard to tell because the resolution is. I swear to God, I would give you a hug right now if I didn't think you'd get hard from it. Well, I did one better. Driving directions. What? Look at you. You know what this means, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, you know, look, this guy could just wind up being some kind of whack job, right? Eric Lazeter, it's been an honor and a privilege being your best friend for the past 16 years. Godspeed, my friend. Cal, you're an amazing human being. The honor and the privilege was all mine. Now get in here. Come here, buddy. Love you, man. Love you, too. Ah, go get it, dog. All right, thank you. Hey, can I have your TV? Dr. Goyer? Joseph Goyer? Well, it's uh, mainly just Joe these days. I'm uh, Eric Lazeter. Nice to see you in person. I've come a long way to talk to you. <laughs> curious? Uh, what can I do for you, son? Uh, truthfully, I'm curious about your uh, theories on time travel. You said it could be achieved in our lifetimes. You said theoretically it was possible. Well, what do you think we'd need to uh, make it happen? A lot of money, and time. Well, money I have. And uh, if your theories are true, time shouldn't be an issue either, right? Well, technically, I... You know what? Let's go inside and talk. Okay, the ball represents the Earth. Okay. The fabric represents that which is malleable, space and time. At this point where the fabric and the ball are touching, represents where we currently are in both time and space. Okay. And with enough energy focused on space and time, you can snap together in time two moments, just for an instant. Sounds a lot like the Rosenbridge theory. It's essentially a wormhole you're talking about, right? Precisely. Now, reports mentioned the immeasurably small amount of time that the gap in space-time was open. Right, suggesting that not even an electron could slip through. And see, that was their flaw, and where my theory differs. The electrons could travel the wormhole, but they arrive on a different plane of existence. When space and time are broken, you effectively create a new alternate reality. One that follows our past exactly until it's created, at which point the unnatural interactions spiral off into a future unrecognizable. Future unrecognizable, so you can change the past. No, 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 you can change your future, or rather the future in the timeline that you travel back to. You're saying this is a one-way trip, right? I suppose interdimensional travel is theoretically possible at some point. The concepts and equations involving that matter far, far exceed anything in the current world known of physics. Why didn't you continue your research? Yeah. Um, Blowing up a lab gives people pause when it comes to acquiring funding. Uh, the incident also caused me to become a bit of a laughing stock within the scientific community. Mm. 
Okay. One last question. How do you feel about second chances? Look around. What do you see? What do you hear? <laughs> Nothing. Exactly. It's just beautiful. All my life I've been surrounded by the busyness of the world. Its problems, the critics. It can literally drain the life out of you. But as I've grown older, I've grown to appreciate the peace of mind that comes with the silence. Mm. I have no desire to go back. None at all, huh? Why is that? A man can only handle so much failure. You know, some of the, some of the brightest minds in history have had to endure incredible amounts of failure in order to achieve success. Take Robert Goddard, for example. Apples and oranges. Not apples and oranges. His theories on rockets, the potential use for space travel, they were highly criticized. He was called a fool, told they were impossible. He was shunned. Eight years later, his research was key in the genesis of the space program. Your point? My point, doctor, is that he let people drive him into seclusion, the critics. And he died before he was ever able to see his vision become reality. My point to you is that maybe it's time for you to get back to work. What's this? A monument to wasted time and money. Want to know how it works? In theory. Sorry. The process of condensing energy can be obtained with superconducted dark matter. Now, dark matter makes up approximately 25% of the total mass of the universe. And while it is not detectable via traditional means, I have devised a way to collect and store limited quantities of it. You can store dark matter, how? By using rods made of a special osmium alloy oppositely charged to create a unique magnetic field which attracts and stores the dark matter. The charges are then reversed, causing the dark matter to be discharged as a form of dark energy with enough power to collapse two points in the space-time continuum. Okay. All right, where do we start? Uh, we start by cleaning the lab. Lab doesn't get used much, huh? Well, used plenty for storage. Uh, and this? How big are the holes? What, are you serious? I mean, I can buy you another pair of socks if that's what you need. Throw it in tools. Tools? See, I've been using these things all wrong. You're looking at it wrong. It's a rag now. That's clever. So, what are you doing with your time these days now that you're done studying time travel? Well, I spend most of my time working on that old truck. It was my dad's. Fixed it up for a long time now. I'm more of a tinkerer, really, than a scientist these days. Though I've never really given up, I suppose. I'm working the problem on a smaller scale. So there are scales to time travel? Powering the machine is only half the battle. I'm working on the equations. I see. Well, call me a simpleton, but uh, these equations look pretty solid to me. Simpleton. The variables are undefined. I spend most of my time chipping away at the possibilities. I have no solutions as of yet. Well, you know, you identify the impossibilities. All you're left with are the possible. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, isn't that the end game? Solve the equation? <sighs> when I was a kid, there was this toy, um, a decoder or a kaleidoscope or something. It was the holy grail to me. It cost five dollars. So I, I scrimped and saved and, and 
added cents here and there. And, and eventually I had it, $5. I went down, I bought the toy, only to have it stolen by this neighborhood bully, Earl Schroeder. Anyway, I save again, and my birthday comes, and all of a sudden, $5 in my palm. I get on my bike, and I pedal so fast to get to the store, I upend my bike on the way to get my perfect prize. Uh, my birthday money went for new handlebars. Not my choice. Back to square one. I save the money, I get to the store, sold out, never to return. Really? Say somebody didn't want you to have that kaleidoscope. Eh, you would think. Years later, I have a job. One week, I get a bonus in my check. I never forgot that toy. I find it at a vintage toy store. I go down to the store. I, I slide the money across the table, ear to ear grin. I collect my perfect prize. I walk outside. I'm, I'm looking through the kaleidoscope. All right. Mission accomplished. Sort of. While I'm looking through the kaleidoscope, not paying attention to where I'm going, I run into this beautiful young woman. She's carrying home groceries from the store, knock them all over the ground. I, in my haste to help her collect her groceries, I step on and crush the kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope was jinxed. No, actually quite the opposite. That beautiful young woman would go on to become my wife. This, this lifelong quest that I was on was actually about something else altogether. See, I'd, I didn't know where I was supposed to be until I'd actually arrived. Earth to Eric. Right. Yeah, and I was, I was just thinking about your story and if your theory's right. I was just thinking maybe your journey's not complete. What is all this, anyway? Uh, most of them are sophisticated gauges and instruments that will allow me to pinpoint exactly when and where a time traveler ends up. As if the process requires exact calculations to determine not only the time, but the place as well. Okay. Uh, the Earth is in constant motion, both rotationally and orbitally. So sending a time traveler back to a specific point in space could very well occur at a time when the Earth isn't there. And I must also account for not only the rotation of the Earth, but also the rate or speed at which the galaxy is expanding. Without precise and exact calculations, a traveler could end up being dropped off in the cold vacuum of space and, and killed instantly. You know, push a couple of buttons, turn a few knobs, right? Hey, you have no idea the amount of education All it right, takes relax. to fathom this I'm kind kidding. of math. I, know, I understand what an imaginary number is. I'm joking. Good. Well, why don't you go get some rest? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we start the real work. Look, I'm no psychiatrist, but I, I can tell there's something more going on with you. Uh, am I allowed to cite personal reasons? All right, let's suffice it to say that um, maybe I wasn't happy where my journey ended up. You know, I decided to take things in my own hands. Surely you've had things in your life that you regret, things you wish you'd done differently. Only one that really mattered. I don't know, man, I gotta tell you, I do not see you getting past my shields. <laughs> your shields will break down. Starfleet's pretty smart in their work. Torpedoes with 16.1 isotone power, 18 Type 7 phase emitters now. The USS Enterprise trumps the Imperial class Star Destroyer in any galaxy. Well, I'd be careful when you set that CPU. That has to be very precisely placed. I got it. Okay. Lightsaber. Pretty cool. Phaser. Range beats melee. Besides, phasers fire Nardian particles. Even if a lightsaber could deflect those, which it's not, because it's meant to deflect pure energy blaster fire, the phaser's continuous beam capability is gonna trump the Jedi's arm strength any day. Yeah, but they're Jedi's. I think they would be slaying red shirts before their arms got tired. Ah, but you forget about the wide beam capability of the phaser. I did not forget about the wide beam capability of the phaser. 
The Jedi only has to protect himself, right? Or herself. Three foot span of a lightsaber, that would protect most. Plus the wide beam only lands on a single flat plane. Everybody knows that. Luke, give me Han. I suppose dream team. Versus Kirk and Spock, an infallible leader and his exceedingly logical sidekick, please. You give Han his blaster, you give Luke his lightsaber. Oh, shit. What happened? I fried a circuit. It was a custom job. It took me two years to build that thing. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we think. The fuel cells discharge in parallel, so I can jump past the defective board, but the, the loss in power I won't be able to calculate until the rods are charged and in place. Once I get the rods in place, I can take some test readings and see what kind of a discharge we'll be able to achieve. So what number are we looking for here? Well, theoretically, something in the neighborhood of 500 exa EVs would be ideal. But at a minimum, we need to achieve at least a petty EV to even think about opening the space-time continuum. So basically, you're saying the amount of energy we generate with this thing is directly related to the amount of time we can travel, right? In layman's terms, yes. Oh. What? What happened? 463 petty EVs. It's quite a power loss, but um, I'd still call this step a success. Okay. So, when are you going to come clean about why you are really here? Why well, I'm really here, does it matter? Of course it matters. Up until now, I've been content to allow you to help me with my research, assuming that your true reason for being here would surface eventually, but as we approach what is certain to be a crossroad in our experiment, your true reason may be an impediment to our continued partnership. How so? Well, that all depends on why you're really here. Now, you could be working for the government and you're here to steal my secrets to use them for your own nefarious purposes. You got me. I'm kidding. I don't work for the government. I'm joking. <laughs> I told you, it's personal. Eric, you have to explain yourself better than that. You really want to know? I do. Okay. I am, uh, I'm here about a girl. I don't know what it is you think we're doing here, but I assure you whatever we accomplish will have little consequence in fixing whatever's wrong with your love life. I'm in love. Okay, I met a girl. And I fell in love with her, and she is fantastic. And she inspires me in ways that I never thought I could be inspired. Okay, and I need you to send me back in time to a point before she meets this guy, this, this, this guy she's with now who she thinks she's in love with. I can't send you back in time. First of all, I, I think you fail to understand the ramifications of such an action. And second, there's no indication this device will even work. Well, you said that this was possible. In theory. Okay. There's no way to, to, to test it or prove it. Well, that's how you test it, right? That's how you prove it. You send me back. That's the test. Eric, I'm not experimenting on you. There's, there's no way of knowing what will happen to someone once they leave my garage. Their molecules could be scattered to the cosmos. And you haven't even thought through the situation that you would be in if and when I could send you back. Yeah, I, you know, I'd, 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 I'd figure it out. You see, that's what I mean. You have no idea what you'd be going back to. You wouldn't exist. I mean, yes, the you from that timeline would exist, but you, Eric, you would have no money, no, no job, no identity. For all intents and purposes, you would struggle to survive. And even if I could send you back, I wouldn't do it for a reason so trite and juvenile as lost love. Trite and juvenile, right? Okay, you know what? Let me tell you something. If you've ever been in love in your life, you know what I was talking about. Right, so don't that's... you stand there and try to pass judgment on me. You know nothing about me. I'm sorry, Eric, I'm sorry. Look, you've been great on the build. You have been. I'm eternally grateful. Yeah, great, you know, you know how you pay me back? Then you send me back. That's how you pay me back. That's the only fucking reason I'm here. I can't send you back. 
Look, these equations, they're still unsolved. So unless you can solve them, I'm sorry. Time travel just it isn't possible. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it, then let's just give up, right? We keep trying. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. We don't give up. I'm we not keep giving up. I'm telling trying. you, time travel is not possible. So that's it, right? That's, uh... What? This whole thing, it's just been futile, right? It's, 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 uh... It's a charade? It's not possible? It's for nothing? No, it wasn't for nothing. We've made great strides in proving my theories. Strides that will be hugely beneficial to mankind in the future. Where are you going? You know what? It looks like I'm going nowhere. I actually envy you. You envy the guy that, uh, guy that's in love with a girl you can't have? No. I envy the guy who knows what he wants and isn't afraid to go after it. Even if going after it looks like it's gonna result in a fiery crash? No, I think we should all be so lucky to experience a crash like that. You know? I mean, at least once in our lives. I suppose. But I like to land safe and sound. I think it's way better plan. Safe and sound, huh? <laughs> Let me tell you something about that. When I was in school, everyone thought I was the wild and crazy one. You know, I'd be the first to do everything. Truth is, I was hiding. I always played it safe. And look where that got me. I am bartending in the middle of fucking nowhere. Well, why don't you get the hell out of here? You know, go, uh, go do something else. Right. Well, it's not that easy. Um, I have responsibilities. You know, I'm not a kid anymore. I can't sit in my room and dream. I. I gotta make shit work. I've got. I've got debt I've gotta pay off. I've got. 40 grand in student loans because I was so set on getting a degree that did me a lot of good. Didn't it? Degrees are a funny thing. Everyone's got responsibilities, you know? It's never too late to dream, is it? Sometimes it's too late to make those dreams a reality. It just is. What if you could go back in time, right? And change something. You can change anything you want. What would it be? Wow. Um, I would do something that scared the shit out of me. I would. I'd go on an adventure. I would get the hell out of here and I don't know if I'd come back. Okay. Uh, an adventure. I like that. Yeah. Where to? Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Me neither. But I hear the northern lights are absolutely breathtaking. And then I don't know. I would just see where the universe took me. I would just, I'd be free. Hmm. You know, it's a shame. By the time we finally figure out what we really want, most of the time it's too late. Opportunities lost. I don't thought about that. You're right. Good luck with that girl.
travel so long, ain't got very far. I'm stuck at a crossroads in this lonely town bar. As this highway is winding on down, I'll see you around. This is how it ends. I will have no regret. This is how it ends. I will have no regret. The stories we live, the mistakes that we make, the love that we give, and the heart. It's all part of this game called life. I say my goodbye. This is how it ends. I will have no regret. I think I got it. All right, I've reworked the Rosenbridge theory with reevaluated properties based on Schwarzschild. We know that C squared is broken. No, no, that's Schwarzschild's theory. I mean, she'll fix those problems. Well, Schwarzschild achieved the proper values. So his equation helps us. Look, we, we know that the speed of light is inconsistent, which means both sides of the equation are inconsistent. All right, the common factors are, thus, 2gm equals inconsistent rc squared. g and m are subject to c squared and r based on irrational polymers. I exist, and it solves everything. She means that much to you. She does. Okay, if you are going to do this, it has to be soon. The rods are decaying at a much more rapid pace than I had initially calculated. According to my estimates, we should be able to generate a discharge of 16.7 PET EVs. Now, this is not what I was hoping for, but it should be sufficient to allow us to connect any two moments in the past five years. According to my calculations, you will arrive in your new reality at 5 a.m. November 21st, 2008, plus or minus five minutes. How's that for irony? Even with a time machine. Uh, I've uh, prepared a survival kit of sorts for you. This should allow you to get to where you need to go. What's this? That's a little bit of pre-2008 cash, the, my old cell phone, and the keys to my truck. And that should allow you to get to Los Angeles. But remember, once you land in 2008, you're going to have to figure out your long-term survival plan. Thank you. Uh, don't even know if the cell phone's gonna work. The electrical interference from the rift in the space-time continuum will likely fry the circuits, but let's go ahead and take it anyway. I'd like to ask you a small favor in return. Yeah, of course, anything. What do you need? The day you arrive is coincidentally the same day as my lab accident. Irony all around. Why didn't that make national news, by the way? I've always sort of wondered. Oh, it did, but the opening of some teen romance vampire movie stole the headlines that day. Anyway, um, I need you to get this to me by 7.30 p.m. That's important. And that should prevent me from blowing up the lab in that time frame. And, and uh, it's a six-hour drive to Los Angeles, so you should have plenty of time. Uh, well, we should get going. Are you, are you ready? Sure. Eric, you must be absolutely certain there's no coming back from this. Yeah, I know. I know I'm sure, yes. Okay. Let's do it. A historic moment, for sure. The first trip ever through time. You know, it's um, comforting to know that while me in my current form will not feel the effects, there will be a copy of me in another reality who will now have the opportunity for a better life.
It's the saddest thing I ever heard. I'm sorry. No, Eric, don't be sorry. You, you gave me a second chance to feel alive again. And that, you deserve your chance. I don't even know what to say to you. There's nothing to say, get up there. Get up there. Come here. Come here. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Go get her. May the force be with you. Go. Oh. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. What do you want from me? Do I know you? Uh, no, not yet. Um, you're Allie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm the only Allie within the next 10 miles. There was this other girl who was calling herself that, but she changed it to Ash, because her name is, um... Ashley? Right. <laughs> okay, so, you know my name. 
sandwiches. <laughs> Weird. So, care to get on even ground with me? Yeah, um, right. Sorry, Eric. Eric, good to meet you. Allie. Yeah, I know. So, Eric, what, uh, what brings you to this fine establishment today? Um, I actually, my, my truck broke down up the road, so I'm sort of stranded. Oh, yeah? Stranded here, yeah. That's a bummer. Right. Well, you want me to call you a tow truck? No, no, no. Um, actually, can I borrow a phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I got one right here. Okay, thanks. Just gonna make a quick phone call to a friend. Be quick, it's prepay. Cal, hey, listen, it's uh, it's Eric. Oh, hey, what's up? Listen, I need you to come pick me up. I'm in Arizona right now. Just stop doing whatever it is you're doing. Come get me. If you woke me up this early for a joke, I'm going back to bed. You no, know, I'm not joking. Listen, I'm in northern Arizona. I need you to come get me, and it's an emergency. Just hurry up, will ya? Tell me where you are. It's uh, 11742 Hickory Way in Grand River, Arizona. All right. You are a lifesaver. Thank you. I've been told that before. You know, I, uh, it's the weirdest thing. I, um, I'm in town for uh, a couple of hours now. I got nothing but headaches. That'll be 102. Oh, well, yeah? The town's really not that bad. If you give it a chance. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the town as much as it is the year. What? Uh, no, I'm probably just dehydrated. Oh, yeah, that happens. Fluids in me. You got a map, by chance, of Arizona I can take a peek at? Sure. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So you like working here, or what? It's okay. You know, pays the bills. I, uh, I'm working here to pay my way through college. Well, I mean, it was either that or be a stripper, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. This town doesn't even have a strip club. You ever, uh, ever think about getting out of here? So I can be a stripper? No. No, I wasn't thinking about that. I was, I mean, you know, get out of here, do something more adventurous. Yeah. Sometimes, is right. Well, don't wait too long, okay? You might, uh, you might miss your window. <laughs> Gee, thanks. That's, uh, sage advice from a total weirdo. You think I'm a total weirdo? Yeah. Well, well I mean, like, in a good way. You're like, um, like, 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 like Thomas Jerome Newton. You know, the man who felt to earth. David Bowie, 1976? You need to watch more movies, man. I will make sure I put that one on my Insta queue. Your instant what? Never mind. Weirdo. Hey, baby, how much? Cal, what's up? Hey, man. Ah! <sighs> whoa, whoa, whoa. There's something different about you. Uh, maybe I look a little older. Yeah, maybe. Hey, so, what are you doing in Arizona, dude? Long story. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. How long did it take you to get here, anyway? Well, I left it like quarter to eight, so, I don't know, five and a half hours? Five and a half? All right, we gotta go. Uh, I'll explain the car. Come on. <laughs> Wait, so, let me get this straight. You travel back in time, so you are you, but you're not really you. Sort of. I mean, yes and no. I am me. It's just I'm not the me from from this time. Well, isn't that what I just said? What are we playing with something first there? Come on. It's complicated. No, no, I get it. I understand that part. What I don't understand is why. Honestly? No, dishonesty. Look, 
I want you to tell me that you came back for Katy Perry because you found out she was lying about it when she kissed that girl, so it shattered your reality so bad that you had to come back to a simpler time. Yes, honestly. What kind of question is that? I'm in love. With Katy Perry? With the girl she kissed? Let me t wait, I, no, neither. It's a different girl. It's a completely different girl. It's not Katy Perry. It's it's a different girl entirely. Oh, man. Did she die or something? No, no, no. She's just, uh, you know, she's unavailable. Unavailable? What the hell does that mean? Wow, is she in prison? No. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> no, she's not in prison. She's, uh, she's engaged. Wow. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Uh, what do you mean? What if she says no? But no, she, she can't say. She's not gonna say no. Okay, just we click. We got a thing. It's, it's she's not gonna say no. So in five years you click. You have no idea who this girl is now. What if you don't even dig the younger her? But I know who she becomes, and I I dig that. So. Yeah, but if she meets you now, she may never even Why become that person. Why are you being such person? a Debbie Downer, man? It's gonna work out. Look, I invented time travel for this girl, okay? Or it's just reality. I traveled through time for this girl. It's going to work. She's not gonna say no. It's fine. Okay. So, where exactly am I dropping you off? Uh, South Hills Mall. But I need you to take me to CCS first. CCS? Yeah. Are you crazy? That's all the way over on the west side. Take us at least an hour to get there. We're not going to be back to South Hills Mall by 645. Right, uh, shit. Let me borrow your phone. You got a phone? Yeah, yeah. It's right here. What is this? You got internet on this thing? No, it's not a computer. Crazy. Hi, yeah, I need, uh, I need you to give me the number for it. The California College of Science. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. What is it? Four nine. All right. Thank you very much. Hi. Yeah, I need to speak to a Dr. Joseph Goyer. He's in your fit. Yes, that's exactly right. That Joseph Goyer, please. No, I, I understand. Listen, it's it's very important. Right. No, I I heard you the first time. Listen, get the mm, just get him on the phone, please. Just get him on. What happened? Dude, you gotta talk her out, man. Try to sound back. sexy. Okay. Let me talk to her. No, no, no. I'm not gonna let you talk to her. Hi. Yeah. You know what? I think we just got disconnected. Um, I was hoping to speak to Dr. Joseph Goyer. Hello. Fuck. This bitch hung up on me. Hey, so where am I taking you, CCS? Where are the mall? <sighs> How far to the mall? Uh, from here, like 20 minutes. Get ready to get Fuck. Yeah, we gotta go to the mall. Right here? Yeah, it's good. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> Hey, uh, let me ask you something. Yeah. What am I like in the future? Pretty much the same guy. Still awesome? Yeah. Score? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you do come out of the closet, though. Wait, what? Yeah. Hey, what? I'm not... What are... Wait, what are you saying? I'm gay? Are you fucking with me? <laughs> Just fucking with me, right? I'm not gay, man. No, I... If I was, I totally know that right now. Yeah, he's just working with me. Wait, is he? sound um, borderline insane. Um, I've got these two tickets to the new Twilight film. I was going to take my little sister and she ended up taking six. So now I'm stuck with these two tickets to Twilight. And um, <laughs> anyway, I was wondering, would you uh, would you want to go with me? This Twilight? 
You are right. That is insane because that movie looks like total garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, you know what it is. It's trash. Um, but I've got the tickets and I thought, why let them go to waste? Oh, actually, I think you can just cash them in as long as the movie hasn't started yet. No. Is that true? Yeah. You're kidding me. It's horrible. Horrible news. Um, I'm gonna level with you. I don't have tickets to Twilight. I was walking, I looked up and I saw your face and I thought that girl is stunning and I've gotta go ask her out. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was that stupid Twilight line, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> you know, I think that might be the worst pickup line I've ever heard. I don't think that would ever work on anyone. Really? At least not in this universe. Let me see the kaleidoscope. You know, next time you might just want to go with the traditional route of, do you want to grab a cup of coffee? No, it's mine. Let's go. Look what you did. You broke it. You know what? Thank you. For what? For inspiring you to do something great. Can you give me the CCS? Here. Cow. Get in. Punch it. Woo! Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Hey, authorized personnel only be on this you point. Gotta be kidding me. You again? Sorry, have we met before? Listen, I, don't I need to talk to Dr. Joseph Goyer. Uh -huh. The doctor is about to oversee a very important experiment. Authorized personnel. You understand the gravity. Sir, decision. if you do not calmly back away, I am authorized to use an appropriate level of force to insert. No. Hey, be nice to people. Be nice. <laughs> Doctor Goyer. What is the meaning of this? Who are you? We're about to start a very complex and dangerous experiment. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean anything to you? You sure I can't convince you to stay? You're a great lab assistant. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, th I think the universe has something more in store for me now, actually. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks for your hospitality. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. You too. All right. This is, uh, this is me. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. gonna sound a little bit crazy. Um, would you like to go on an adventure with me? An adventure? Yeah. I don't know, it depends. Where? I hear the northern lights of Alaska are absolutely breathtaking this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> 